here we go guys entropy is here with us i do an entropy welcome hey man good and you ah, just woke up you know we gamers this this yeah. is too early for early us. mornings yeah um could you tell us a little bit about yourself when you joined nq and uh well what you do now in nq sure um well i'm a game designer at nova cork uh, I've been at Novacork for about three years now. I think we're we're just about on my third year. Mm -hmm. uh, so I guess I joined in about 2017, if, uh, if that makes sense. Um, and yeah, I've been a game designer here for about three years, and I was recruited when we were really ramping up the production of the game on the, the gameplay side before you know we were more in the exploratory phase of, uh, of the tech and, and how that was going to go uh, around the Kickstarter times. And, uh, and now we're here three, three years later, so... Yeah. So, how much has Nova Core changed since the Kickstarter times like three years ago till till now, and in, in the Corona crisis as well? I mean, it's changed quite a bit. Um, I think we we have you know some uh, a couple of legacy employees uh, that were around all the way back then, uh, including the the founder JC, who is one of those people. Uh, I think there's about two or three people left from you know all the way back in maybe 2014 when the Kickstarter was launched. Um, but you know, since then we've we've grown quite a bit. Um, back then, the team was probably around fifteen to twenty people, uh, and everybody was in Paris. Uh, now we're about I want to say eighty to ninety people, and we have people in Montreal. Uh, so we we've opened a second studio to be able to recruit more people and, and get uh, different types of talent that we can necessarily get here in Paris. Mm -hmm. uh, so we've grown quite a bit, and then the game has grown quite a bit. Um, in regards to COVID, uh, you know, it's it hasn't been easy. The the work from home. I'm I'm at home right now, as you can see. Uh, it's definitely uh, slowed us down a little bit. Um, it makes everything just a little bit harder. Uh, yeah. Communication's a little bit harder, especially for someone like me who, who as a game designer, has to communicate and talk to a lot of different people. Uh, it was uh, it was very convenient to just be able to you know go over to people and you know sit next to them and watch their screens yeah. and you know sort of draw things and and, and hash things out. Uh, so so it's a little bit harder, but you know we're we're pushing through it. All right. Well, um, I guess that is affecting. The game design and game involvement, uh, it's a little bit slower, but uh, so far so good, I would say, for a DU, especially since it's in beta. Um, let's go over some, some topics that are a little bit... Um, un hmm, how would I put it? They're not known yet, I guess not disclosed from the NQ side. Sure. Um, what is your current stance on having some kind of free trial for new players coming into the game? Free trials and and you know like uh, you know for some level of free to play that sort of stuff is is really hard for us mm -hmm. um, because one of the things that we're worried about is uh, keeping to a degree the integrity of the of the game world. Um, and when we have paying players, uh, that's something that we can manage. Because you know we we can deal with the fact that you know everyone that comes into the game has paid for something and we can manage that. Um, the problem with free access periods is that we don't manage that at all, and it would be difficult for us, at least on the server side and on the management side, to be able to deal with having potentially thousands, if not you know hundreds of thousands of players being able to come in at any time, affect the game world, be able to edit planets, be able to be in this world. Yeah. That's something that's a tough subject for us. So. Um, it's something that we've talked about, and it's something that we would like to do because we're aware of the benefits, obviously. I mean, mm -hmm. be, people being able to test the game and get into the game and seeing what it's about before putting down money is, you know, is a, a tried and true tactic to to get more people in the game at the end. Yeah. Um, but it's something that's difficult for us to manage both on the server side and on the man on the you know more the customer management side, I guess. And so it's something that we've held off for now. Uh, maybe as you know, we get the game more stable and we get everything in a better space. Uh, eventually, we can sort of look at that sort of thing again and and see what we can do. Mm -hmm. uh, what about uh, DAC or or Plex systems being introduced into the game? So that is definitely still uh, on the roadmap at some point. Uh, it's something that we need for release because that was uh, you know a promise, and it's it's mm -hmm. part of the game to be able to to have that system up and running and be able to pay for sub time with in game money. Yeah. Um, it's something that. You know, we intentionally delayed for beta. Uh, it's not necessarily something that's quick or fast to do and something that we do need to be careful of because obviously it touches uh, the economy, both on the, the, the real side of our, of our finances and then the in-game side of the economy that we need to be careful with. 
Um, but it's something that you know we are planning to do. It's 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 not forgotten, and uh, it, we know that we need it for a release, so it'll pop up at some point uh, between now and release. All right, all right, that's good. Uh, but from a new player's perspective, someone that didn't touch DU yet, what would you say is the goal of DU? That's what I get asked every day, ten times. Like, what is the goal of sure. this game? Because people look at me, I'm building stuff, I'm flying around, I'm doing this and that, but they don't see a point. What would you say is the point right. of you? I think there's there's maybe two answers to this question. Maybe there's the more macro answer, which is you know, the tagline of the game is, you know, rebuild civilization, right? I think that's one of the global sort of maybe high level goals that we've always had is, you know, if we wanted to have an actually multiplayer, you know, single shard uh, civilization building game, what would it look like, right? What What would be... What would the you know we just put a bunch of players in a world and there's ways to gather resources and there's ways to communicate and there's ways to barter and trade and there's ways to fight potentially um what does that look like you know in one year what does it look like in five years what does it look like in 10 years right do, do will players build a civilization or will everything just go down in a blaze of glory you know in, in many ways it's a it's a big social experiment to yeah. see what happens when you just spawn a bunch of people in a in an empty world and and just let people go at it right yeah um, that's a bit. Of, that's the macro answer, I guess. I think the more micro answer is it. It sort of is what you make of it, um, and I do think we need to do a better job at helping you find goals in the game. Mm -hmm. um, right now, everything is super open ended, right? Um, usually, in games these days, especially in you know in twenty twenty, you're used to uh, games helping you a little bit or a lot in certain situations. To they'll, they'll tell you what to do, right? It's like oh, go here and do this, or go here and do that, right? Yeah. We're we're on the polar opposite of that, and it's not only a good thing. It also has some some bad elements because sometimes people do come into the game and they are a little bit lost. And that is something that we need to work on, right? We need to be able to help you and say, hey, well, if you're more interested in maybe the you know the building side, the industry side, the the resource gathering side, maybe you try this. Here are some missions. Here's some things that you can do. Here's some maybe some organizations that you can join. Some some access that yeah. you have, right? Or if you're more interested in fighting, here's here are these other paths that you can go down and maybe give you a little bit of content, a little bit of uh, of things that we can provide for you, to sort of get that rolling. Mm -hmm. um, but I guess fundamentally, it is what you make of it. Um, you know, you, you step into this world. There's a lot of different things that you can do. And at that point, it is sort of up to you. But I think we need to help you get to that point. So you mentioned organizations, joining organizations to achieve a certain goal or play a certain play style. Are you guys thinking of some kind of way of supporting or integrating a big orgs into the game as in, oh, if you want to do this, maybe consider one of these five orgs or some yeah. sort of system like that yeah absolutely so we we believe that like orgs and players are essentially our our, our most important resource right um you know we i was an eve online player i played a bunch of other of these types of games mm -hmm. and we know that community and, and organizations and, and the players that build and, and are in the game every day are something that's really important to help other players come into the game right um, and, and this is something that we see even now in, in Duel, right? When we have someone that comes in and is interested in doing a particular thing, maybe an organization will, will advertise, right? And we, we have these advertisement panels on the on the districts. Uh, people say, hey, if you want to do industry, if you want to do this, if you want to do that, come join us, blah, blah, right? Mm -hmm. um, and we think that's a great thing, and we want to empower that, and we want to try to make strides towards making it easier uh, for organizations to advertise, right? So mm -hmm. maybe that means a little bit of a revamp of the uh, of the corporation search, right? Or the organization search, right? Maybe yeah. it's going to be easier to have like advertised organizations to you, right? If you say, hey, I'm interested in industry mining, maybe we can have a couple of like flagship orgs uh, that are going to be like posted and be like, hey, these are like the the main guys and, you know, maybe the the approved, you know, good guys or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, mm. and, and yeah, and we want to bridge that gap and help organizations be able to recruit and help organizations be able to help new players i think you know we're not exactly sure how we're going to do it and again everything is a matter of time and place uh but at least from the design side that is something that we would like to to encourage all right that's uh very interesting i don't think approach like that has been uh, well i haven't seen something like that in any other game yet where the game actually points people at organizations like player made stuff and says you know this is what you want to yeah. do where you want to be if you want to do this and that all right that's that's a very interesting approach um what about some sort of player missions or objectives that you might be adding uh, to and further guide people to uh accomplishing goals 
Yeah, so there's I guess there's two there's two parts to this uh, to this answer. The first part in regards to player made missions, uh, that is something that is actually on the way that we're we're actively working on right now. Mm -hmm. um, the idea being, and you know, I won't leak too much, but the idea being that uh, as a player, you can sort of put up a post on a on a mission board. And you'll be able to say, hey, I want this, I need this, I, I need some minerals moved, or I want to buy this element, or mm -hmm. I need help over here, or you know, all sorts of things. It'll be more of an, uh, an open-ended system where you can uh, be a little bit more general in your request, depending on what it is you need. And then other players can sort of browse this board and be like, oh, I can, I can help this guy. Let me respond to him and get into contact with him. Oh, I can, you know, I have a hauler. I can help him move his minerals from this planet to this planet, or this guy actually needs, you know, gunners for some PVP expedition. I can, I can register to this guy and, and go help him out. So that is something that we're working on. And we want to, again, we want to give players the tools to be able to communicate and talk together and form groups and, and, and do stuff together. And the the player mission system is uh, is one of those things. Mm -hmm. I guess the the second part of that answer is I guess more um, NPC missions, uh, especially as a form of early game content. Um, this is something that we're that we've talked about in the past, um, and that it's it's something that we think we could do, um, especially as an alternative to uh, mining in the early game to be able to make some money. Uh, to have sort of like these NPC missions that you can do so that you you don't only mine to make money, but you can actually do some other things. Um, that's not that's not planned for super soon, uh, but it's something that we've always looked at and that we think we can probably get done and, and we think it could be important. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, on the topic of this game lasting for years and years, what is going to happen to constructs and territory tiles, etc., of players that are just completely inactive Sure. Two years down the line, um, is it's since play, uh, players want to be able to interact with alive stuff, um, what happens to that? Yeah, so we're we're gonna need, and this we already have sort of the building blocks of certain of these mechanics, but we're gonna need a very comprehensive. It's what we call on our side garbage collecting, mm -hmm. right? And it's a very it's very to the point in terms of the naming. Uh, but in regards to players that leave stuff behind, abandoned constructs, abandoned territories, anything abandoned, whatever whatever it is, if it's on active. Uh, we need sort of a comprehensive garbage collecting that's going to be able to, you know, run behind the in the back end and be, just be able to clean everything up, right? So if you own a territory and you've been gone for months or you know whatever period we did we define as uh, as appropriate, um, eventually that territory will be deleted and that the tile will be uh, you know freed up and other players mm -hmm. will be able to come in and get it. We we don't want sort of to have these. Uh, you know, abandoned tiles and abandoned constructs sort of like litter the the landscape, especially in many, many years where you know potentially many uh, generations of players will have cycled through the system. Yeah. Um, we need to be able to sort of like clean that up in the background and and make those tiles and make those constructs available for everyone. And uh, we're aware aware of that. That's obviously that's not something that was super prior for beta because being this early in the cycle of the game, yeah. uh, you know we're not planning on having that much abandoned stuff yet. Uh, but as we keep going forward, and you know, even now, the players that you know maybe tried the game and maybe left, uh, we're going to need to start having these solutions to be able to clean up the landscape and clean up these tiles and clean up these constructs so that uh, we don't have you know uh, so much abandoned stuff everywhere, as you said. Yeah, but what would define an abandoned construct? Because people won't abandon construct themselves. There's, there's got to be sure. a system that is going to say, okay, now this construct is too old and too inactive. Let's Let's abandon it. Let's make it abandoned, and let's make it into the. Fundamentally, we're looking at your uh, at your account status, right? Mm -hmm. um, at least for most things, right? If you're subscribed, if you're paying for the game, even if you're not actively playing in the game every day, but maybe who knows? Maybe yeah. you're deployed overseas, or maybe you have three months where you can't play the game, but you want to keep your sub going. We're not going to go and delete your constructs, especially if you keep if you're subscribed to the game, right? Um, but if you're unsubscribed to the game and you've been away for a certain period of time number of months probably uh and and it seems like you're not coming back we've even talked about having uh you know sort of confirmation boxes for hey i am actually leaving the game and then maybe that triggers some sort of a uh, thing in the back end where like okay well you know you've accepted that you're leaving the game we've even talked about having ways to be able to sort of um save your constructs mm -hmm. so that you know if you know you're going to be able to leave for six months and you know that you know your stuff's going to get Delete it if you if you don't deal with it. Maybe you can say, okay, well, there's a process to say, well, I can save this construct, 
it's hopefully, you know, obviously we're going to do everything that we need to do to make sure that it's not exploited and all that stuff. But you can save this construct, search, put it in the cloud. And then if you come back in six months, you can sort of like redeploy it and be like, okay, I'm back now. I can start playing again. I, I was away and now I can, I can start playing again with this construct that, uh, that I kept that I held on to. So we, we will need a bunch of systems to sort of deal with people that are leaving and, you know, when, when you've created like a big base, if you created a big ship, you've put a bunch of time into the game. We also need to be able to have systems that say, hey, well, all your work isn't just going to be totally deleted the second that you leave. We need to sort of have like these transition periods and this, these ways where we help you uh, save your constructs and sort of save at least a certain number of your resources. Maybe not everything, but at least maybe some of it. Mm -hmm. So some kind of personal vault, let's say, yeah. an activity vault yeah. where they could sure. put some stuff in. All right. Yeah, exactly. That's a good way of looking at it. All right. Um, recently, I've been meddling around with uh, Eula a lot and uh, downloading custom scripts, etc. And already, the scripts are so extensive and help you so much. I'm yeah. afraid that it might kind of uh, remove the human element from from piloting and from some other uh, chores, let's say. Um, what are your thoughts on autopilot scripts where you just click one button and you go from one planet to the other? Yeah, I mean I think that's the that's the the power of Lua, right? So there's yeah. there's upsides and there's downsides. Um I think we need to be very careful about what we allow and what we don't allow and I think it's going to be a very case by case thing. Mm -hmm. Um you know, I mean internally we have these discussions and we have people that are very very pro you know, let everything happen, right? It, it's totally emergent, like everything, you know, whatever happens, happens. And then, you know, we, we have the opposite viewpoint where some people think, well, you know, we need to make sure that it's not at the detriment of the gameplay and we need to make sure that things don't become totally automated, right? That was one of the reasons why you can't automate anything in PvP, right? So that was sort of a hard line that we drew in the sand. No matter what, you won't be able to automate turrets, you won't be able to automate targeting, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was that was sort of our first line that we drew in the sand that we say, okay, we're not going to cross this. Um, Everything in regards to piloting, I think it has to be a case by case basis. In regards specifically to autopilot scripts, um, you know, it, it, I guess it depends on the toll that it takes on the game. If it becomes something that uh, where everybody is just perma AFK and you know these transit systems become, you know, uninteresting and and no one's interacting with the with the ships and with the constructs anymore, maybe that's something that we need to address. Um, if it stays more of a fringe thing, because I mean, there is going to be some upside and some downside to to, to having an auto autopilot script, right? If you're going through the PvP zone, probably you're not going to want to autopilot your way through the PvP zone, right? Mm -hmm. um, if you're going from safe planet to safe planet and you know that you're not going to be able to get shot, is that an acceptable use case? Honestly, I'm not sure. I, I, I sort of go back and forth. I think we need to have sort of a, a big evaluation of the of the positives and the negatives that it's doing for for any particular use of the of the Lua. And uh, and just make decisions off of that, and and, yep. and ultimately make sure that we're making the right decisions for the health of the game, and that you know removing anything that gets too toxic or anything that removes you know when things get too bad, essentially. Yeah. Um, well, what Lua does also is uh, I don't know if you've seen that, but HG, the anti grav uh, generator, uh, can be sure. boosted yeah. so hard with Lua where. You just take off of anywhere, you land anywhere, um, it goes like a thousand kilometers plus. Uh, yeah. Is that an intended, intended use for no. HG? So that, that, that's, that's honestly just a bug. Oh, okay. um, and then it's one that we're just in the process of fixing. Um, mm -hmm. Lua shouldn't be able to break anything. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and when it does, it's definitely a bug and it's unintended. Um, the the anti graph thing specifically is is just an unintended sort of mix between the Lua calling some functions and the anti gravity not being able to respond to them correctly. Mm -hmm. uh, the Lua shouldn't be able to bypass uh, basic game mechanics, uh, so that's just a bug. That's something that we're going to fix. You're not going to be able to go 500, 600 uh, meters per second with your with your anti gravity yeah. more, um, for better or for worse. But yeah, Lua shouldn't be able to let you bypass any of the rules and mechanics of the game. Anything that you can do, you know, normal. Lua can automate it, and Lua can modify it in certain ways, but it can't just like bypass it and 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 make it you know better in a way. So that's just a bug, and we're we're gonna fix that. Yeah, uh, another uh, like piloting bug, let's call it, is the nano pack queuing uh, issue where people just sure. queue up a, a million of ore. Um, is yeah. that currently a bannable offense, or is it, it, it? I don't know if you know that at the moment. 
So it's it's not bannable because it's something that we're aware of, and it's you know it's it's one of those things where, uh, you know, we didn't we didn't put in the time on our end to sort of solidify that interaction. Mm -hmm. So it's our fault in in, in a way. Um, so it's definitely not a bannable offense. It's not something that you know. If we want to fix it, we'll fix it. Uh, it's something that's uh, somewhere on the priority list. Uh, mm -hmm. We want to make sure that you know we get to those things. Um, right now, it's not something that drastically breaks the game. In certain ways, it makes the game a little bit easier. But um, I think eventually, it's something that we'll deal with. Um, we don't necessarily want you to be able to, you know, move, you know, ten Excel containers worth of T1 ores yeah. uh, for nothing by queuing it up and then and then being able to go into a fighter and then you know zooming across space with zero yeah. mass. That's yeah. not something that we want, uh, and it's probably something that we'll fix eventually. But uh, we just have to. You have to get to it eventually, but yeah, not bannable as, as far as mm -hmm. I'm aware. Okay, I mean, this the fix is relatively simple, I guess. You just limit the amount that you can queue up in, in one yeah. stack, and that's about we, it. We've talked about batches, uh, that was one of the things that we talked about, and the other thing we talked about is just honestly adding the the mass to your, to your character. So, if you're, if oh, you're yeah. gonna queue up, you know, you know, the 20,000 liters of, uh, of carbon ore to refine, it's still going to weigh yeah. what it weighed, right? I guess you can be um, fixed so... in multiple ways uh, easily. It's just yeah. a matter of time when it comes. All right. Um, cosmetic items as something uh, optional that you can buy in a store, uh, in your store for real money. Is that something that is coming? Um. It's not coming soon because I, it's not something that we're actively working on right now. Uh, it's something that we'd like to have eventually. Mm -hmm. uh, but I guess at this state of the game, at this point in, in development of the game, we're sort of focused on gameplay and fixing the core issues and, and making sure that the game works, that the servers are stable, stuff like that. Um, and we're not trying not to put too much time into that sort of thing. Eventually, it's something that we would want um, uh, both you know, for, for players to be able to customize themselves and maybe even have... Um, you know, cosmetics that could drop from various parts of the game, right? So maybe if you're a big miner, you could be able to have a, you know, mining specific attire. And if you're a big PvP, or you could have, you know, PvP specific attire, stuff like mm -hmm. that. Um, it's something that we would like, but it's honestly at this point very low on the on the priority list with with you know all the things that we have to do, and all the you know the big important changes that we that we want to do uh, in the future. Mm -hmm. um, talking about the servers and their performance. You say, sure. well, uh, let's say the servers are relatively stable now. Uh, what exactly relatively. does that mean? Yeah, but what exactly does that yeah. mean in uh, technical specs? How, what is the current tick rate of the server? Um, so our, our, I'll be totally honest. Our server tech is insanely complicated, and I'm just a, a simple game designer, and mm -hmm. it's uh, absolutely not my area of expertise. So if there's any super technical guys out there watching, you know, I could be totally wrong about what I'm saying. Um, we we have different parts of the servers that handle different things, and not everything is built on the same system. Mm -hmm. uh, so, for example, I know that our our player, our character avatar refresh rate is about 10 hertz. Mm -hmm. um, so, when you see just characters moving around in the landscape, that's about 10 hertz. But when you see ships moving around, that's going to be a different system that's handling. When you see when the radar sees a ship and and that ship is moving around, it's going to be a different system that's handling these things. Um, yeah, the, the server tech is super complex, and honestly, I, I don't feel super comfortable giving like yeah, yeah. Uh, good answers on it because I, I don't even think I have really have the knowledge. Every time that we have these discussions with the with the server team, I sort of struggle to to understand <laughs> exactly what it is they're talking about. Uh, but uh, they're they're doing good work. I mean, I think the the server stability has gotten better uh, since launch, and you know that's still the number one priority for the server team is to continue making it stable, is to continue scaling it up, uh, and making it as stable one especially when there's a lot of players in the same area well uh, the reason why i'm asking that is well first of all i can see in game because i have two pcs and i have two accounts uh, playing sometimes in, in the same area and i can see when i've moved around with one character it takes about two seconds for the other one to see that sure. um now it, there's you know client server client there's a lot of stuff going on but um why i wanted to mention that is a lot of people have been saying that Atmo PvP, uh, like Planet PvP, is coming in soon. As in, I don't know, a month away? And I would just like to clear up that with you. Um, I would say it's a year away. Uh, wh um, what are your... So I, I don't feel super comfortable giving dates uh, yeah. for something like Atmo PvP at this point. 
but I can tell you that it's not coming in a month. Okay. Yeah. So <laughs> I, can, I can probably nip that in the bud. Um, exactly when we're going to do Atmo PVP is, is, is unclear. I mean, we have the building blocks mm-hmm. uh, of Atmo PVP. I think, I think the main answer that I can give you about this topic is that um, Atmo PVP is it something that we want to do in conjunction with territory warfare. Mm-hmm. So to us, that's, that's one pack, right? We, we don't really want to release one without the other. It yeah. doesn't really make sense. Right. Um, so it's a big feature. Uh, we have the building blocks for parts of it, uh, but there's also parts of it that we haven't quite done. Um, so I, I can tell you that it's not coming in a month. Uh, it's something that we will have eventually. I, a year, I don't know. Maybe it'll be earlier than a year. Uh, but uh, but yeah, I think that's that's about all I can say on that subject. Mm-hmm. And uh, Territory PvP, um, is there any concept that you have planned for it? Uh, anything that you could share? Um, I think something that's uh, that's popped up in in other interviews, and then when we've talked about it publicly, is this idea of having um, territories protect each other. I think that's something that we that's an idea that we want to explore. I, I won't mm-hmm. comment on the specific mechanic or exactly how it's mm-hmm. going to work because honestly, it's it's not uh, it's not in set in stone. And it could completely yeah. change. So I, yeah. I you know I, I would be maybe a little bit misleading. Um, but we we want to have an idea that um, you want to have territories and groups. Right, mm-hmm. whatever that means. Right, so the idea being that you want to make some sort of country, right? So mm-hmm. you don't just want to have like these isolated territories here and there, and all of their all of their defense is going to be equivalent. Uh, we want to have you build some sort of country and have an empire and have be sure that you're building in the same general area. That's sort of the general goal uh, for the territorial warfare. And so, exactly how we're going to encourage that and how we're going to make that happen is, is still up to debate. Uh, but yeah, we have had these ideas that, okay, well, maybe if you have a territory that's surrounded by a bunch of other territories, that center territory is going to be better protected, mm-hmm. whatever that means, right? Mm-hmm. Um, it could be some sort of numbers buff. It could be just the fact that you have to go through uh, these exterior territories before getting to the interior ones. It could be some mix of, of various things. Um, yeah, the, the general design, the general idea is to make sure that people build in the same general area and you're not just like sniping territories and like, oh, I want this one, I want this one, I want this one. It's like, okay, well, it's more like let's choose where we're going to build our country and where we're going to, you know, set up our, our main bases and, and, and build from there. Mm-hmm. But would you say that someone on Ion right now should worry about that stuff or is it still so far away that the game's going to change enough to and allow people to edit their territories or rearrange them or whatever um when it comes i would say that it's probably a little bit early to worry about it since even i'm not totally necessarily aware of the the exact mechanics of how mm-hmm. everything is going to work um you know if you wanted to be safe if you for, if you wanted to start hogging up territories i mean that's that's on you mm-hmm. um but i would say trying to plan for the territory warfare at this point is probably a little bit early mm-hmm. okay that's that's good info um also on the pvp we currently have safe zones around every planet that extend to uh, two and a half SU. That's 500 kilometers. Yep. Or, yeah. Um, yep. Then we also have the safe zone triangle of Mattis, Alioth, and uh, Deities that extends sure. f- even further out from those planets. Um, is there any info that is confirmed on which planets are going to stay safe zone forever? Or at least in this system? Sure. Um, is it is it the so triangle? The, the, yeah. So the the goal right now is to, as you said, the triangle planets. Uh, the goal right now is to keep those safe. Mm-hmm. So you know, if if we have any players listening, it's it's sort of our equivalent of high security space, right? All right. Um, it's 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 a PVE zone. It's the area where the people who don't necessarily want to engage in PvP can sort of be relatively safe and not be worried about getting ganked, about getting attacked, about getting pirated on stuff like that. We 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 think that it's healthy to have that area in the game where you can have sort of a PvE player base and an area where you can engage in the mechanics that aren't PvP without fear of PvP. Because mm-hmm. for many players and, and for players that don't do PvP, PvP is a, a real fear, right? I mean, we're in a game where you have real loss. I mean, when you mined up a ship, when you've spent potentially hours mining, hours building, and then you know you, you finally get into space and someone just blows you up because maybe you didn't see the feedbacks or you didn't yeah. you know you, you didn't know where you were going, you're maybe a little bit new. That can be a hugely discouraging and a hugely damaging experience. Um, so we, we want to be careful to not sort of uh, deny that part of the player base, which is just going to want to engage maybe in industry, which is just going to want to engage in building and mining and that sort of stuff. Um, I think 
so so yeah, I, I, the goal right now is to say that the triangle plans are going to stay, stay safe. I, I can't say anything 100%. You know, who knows what happens in a year, in two years, in three years. Maybe something changes. Maybe something's not healthy. Again, we have to be reactive to the state of the game and the things that are happening. So if something happens in a year, which and the solution is to say like, okay, well, these plants can't be safe now. Mm -hmm. You know, that's going to be a thing that we're that we're allowing ourselves to do. But, you know, that's not the plan right now. All right. Um, I think just to, to go maybe a little bit further on that question, um, we need to do a better job at on, on the other side of that, right? On the other side of having those safe zones and having those uh, the, the triangle plants be safe, uh, we need to do a better job at encouraging uh, you know more healthy versions of PvP, right? So mm -hmm. we have PvP in the game right now, and it's it's sort of in its, in its early V1 version, right? And we can talk about the the specifics of that in, in a little yep. bit. Um, but I think we need to do a better job at having healthy forms of PvP in the game uh, where everybody is sort of like a willing participant, right? So having pirating is is fine and it's cool and it's 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 part of the game world and that's that's something that we want. Um, having sort of like arranged fights where everybody just shows up, it's like, let's, you know, we want to fight, let's kill each other, blah, blah, blah. That's also cool. But we need systemics reason to do PvP, right? So we need mm -hmm. objectives in the game world where you're going to want to fight over them, right? Yeah. We need things to happen where it's like, oh, let's go here and do this thing. And if anyone shows up, we're probably going to need to kill them, right? That sort of thing. That sort of thing that we want to go towards in, in regards to PvP. Uh, have you played World of Warcraft by any chance? Yep. Uh, Gurubash Arena style PvP? Yeah, sure. So I guess that's um, that's a little bit more of a of an arranged PvP, right? Because when you go to Gurubashi, yeah. especially on PvE servers, uh, it's more like, well, I want to fight somebody, you know, and maybe there's a reward at the end, and you get the there's yeah, that, the yeah. trinket and stuff. But it's coming back to me now. It's been a yeah. it's been a, yeah, yeah. a so a reward is the incentive, yeah. like something yeah, exactly. special so, there. Yeah. Um, let's say twenty four hours up front. Everyone gets a notification that there's an event going on, and you know if you want to get into that fight, go go and get it. That's yeah, yeah, that's exactly the sort of thing that we want to encourage, and we want we want to encourage PvP where everybody is a willing participant in a way, right? Mm -hmm. We want to encourage PvP where everybody shows up. It's like okay, we know we're gonna fight. We know there's a reward. We know there's an objective. We know maybe we'll lose, but if we win, it's gonna be great, right? And that's mm -hmm. that's sort of. That's the direction that we want to go with in PvP. And we can still have pirating on the side, and we can still have honor brawls on the side. I think in the long term, having pirating as the only main form of PvP is going to be damaging to the ecosystem. Mm -hmm. I don't think I don't think that's what we want. Yeah. Yeah. Um, going back to the safe zone thing, why is Sanctuary called Sanctuary if it's no different than other planets in the safe zone triangle? Sure. I think maybe that's a little bit of a development, you know, hijinks. Mm -hmm. uh, the reality is these things were developed, you know, semi-independently. So the sanctuary plants were always going to be safe regardless of anything else that happened in the game. Mm -hmm. Sanctuary plants and sanctuary moons were always going to be these safe havens that were totally untouchable, right? Mm -hmm. So they got sort of granted these uh, this this special treatment in a way. Okay, so and those are 100%. Added, and, and yeah, then everything absolutely. else is so, ninety something percent. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, right. and you know, for example, one of the reasons why that is is because uh, we could spawn a sanctuary moon in the PvP zone if we wanted, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So tomorrow, we if we wanted to have a moon around uh, Taloma or Ion or, or any of the, these other PvP plants, people, you know, non triangle plants, I guess mm -hmm. we could have a safe sanctuary moon in orbit of one of these moons, and it would still be a sanctuary moon, and it would still have all the protections of a sanctuary moon, but it would just be in the PvP okay. zone, right? Okay, I never so thought of that. Yeah, that's, that's yeah, yeah that, that makes sense now. All right, all right. Um, Let's talk a little bit about performance, because for me, I think that's one of the main things that drive people away from the game. Is there yeah. any, like, big performance updates coming out soon, or how are you going to address the... The critical performance. I know that you've already changed the Elliot stuff around, like the markets, the yeah. districts. Is there any other major changes that you want to do to increase performance? So performance is, you know, I, I would put performance in the same category as service stability in terms of mm -hmm. priority. In, in in what I mean that it's number one. Um, we know that you know having terrible frame rates is just a horrible, horrible experience. Uh, when things aren't stable, when things just aren't working, um, you know, we know that it drives players away, and we, you know, we agree, uh, and we want to get performance to the best that we possibly can, and we essentially have people working on performance almost all the time. Yeah. Um. You know, it's not everybody on the team, but there are people on the team right now 
working 100% of their time dedicated to making the performances better. Mm -hmm. And as you said, you know, we've shipped a new version of the market. So hopefully performances around uh, the, the starter zones, the markets are going to be better now. Uh, we had the the compact, uh, you know, the the ship compact yeah. compactification uh, that hopefully also helped address these things. So we're we're going to keep ha doing that. We're going to keep uh, having systems that help uh, performance, like you know, help remaking markets and compactification. Mm -hmm. And then in the back end, we're going to keep optimizing and making sure that you know, if there's any big uh, big negatives, you know, things specific things that are tanking performance, we're going to go out aggressively after them and, and try to fix them and. It's it's our top prio, and we're just sort of working our way through it, and hopefully, you know, eventually we get to a very a much healthier state in terms of performance. And I think we've made decent strides since beta to now, and we're just going to keep going. Mm -hmm. uh, what about RDMS improvements? Uh, we've seen quite a few like thefts and stuff happening lately, yeah. and it wasn't caused by any bugs in the game. It was just sure. caused by the whole inconvenience of using RDMS and one little mistake leading into losing your yeah. whole base. I was close to quitting the game after a month of work got stolen away from me and, and 10 other people that were working on a project. Yeah. And um, is there something that you could do to make that happen less at least? Yeah, that, that, that sucks. I, I totally understand. Um, I think RDMS is an awkward spot where... Um, in many ways, it is an incredibly powerful and versatile system. Mm -hmm. Once you sort of understand all the ins and ins ins and outs of uh, of what's going on there, uh, but that's sort of also the main problem with it is that it is in control of some major systems and it it, it acts on some major things. As you said, you know, if you set the wrong permissions, if you hit the wrong button, you know, your stuff's gone, right? Yeah. Uh, because someone just walked up and took it, right? And and so on the one hand, it's super powerful and it does so many things potentially on the, the other hand if you hit the wrong button everything's gone uh so it's it's um it's a little bit of an awkward spot i think we need to do a better job on the ui side mm -hmm. uh and we need to do a better job on the feedback side and we need to make sure that you understand what it is that you are doing and we need to probably do a better job at helping you do the things that you want to do right because i think today if you're not intimately familiar with how it works and even internally i mean there's probably only a couple people that are like fully aware of how you know the the breadth of the RDMS system and how mm -hmm. exactly uh, even internally we have like the RDMS. I mean, I'm one of them. We have the RDMS experts, and when you know something, when the level designers need something or something goes wrong, we need to go into investigative mode and figure out, okay, is this working? But it's just you know user error, as we say, um, or is it an actual bug? And that's uh, that's a problem, right? It shouldn't be this way. We shouldn't need to. Uh, uh, to have sort of like this investigative process to figure out if RDMS is working or if it's just, or if it's a bug. Yeah. Um, so I think at some point we'll have some sort of RDMS revamp, um, at least on the, on the UI side. Um, the, the backend surprisingly actually works very well. I mean, when, when you actually get into the roots and you actually start, wor start working with the, with all the tags and all the stuff, the, even the custom tags and you start grouping all the elements together, um, it's surprising what you can what you can do. I'm not, mm -hmm. I'm not even sure if anyone's actually unlocked the full power of RDMS at this point. Maybe someone has, but I, I you know, it's a very complex process. Uh, but we need to do a better job at helping you get there, and we need to do a better job at making sure that you understand what you're doing and that you can do what you want. Mm -hmm. um, so it's probably a lot of UI and a lot of feedback stuff that we need to work on. And and um, yeah, it's rough, and we we, we don't want. You know, as you said, you know, you 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 hit the wrong button, and you know your whole stuff is gone. Uh, that's definitely a very frustrating experience, and and you know we we need to do a better job at making sure that we can avoid that. Yeah, uh, if just a little bit of feedback on that. Um, most of the interfaces today on the web, everywhere else, is when you select something, it's automatically saved. In this game, sure, you always have to select something, click add, click save. Yeah. And it adds so many actions where a lot, like 50%, I'm not even t kidding, 50% of the times I forget to click save or forget to click add, and then something's not added. Because I'm sure. so out of that mentality where I have to click save yeah, and Yeah, I add. understand. Yeah. So I would definitely I mean, I, like yeah, to see I, that removed. Uh, you know, if okay. I select something, it's it's done. Like, that's it. That's good feedback. I mean, yeah. it's, uh, I'll talk about it to our UI guys, and we'll see we'll see what they come up with. Um, I think I think I agree with that. Um, mm -hmm. I think maybe we we have, you know, in, in the goal of making sure, I guess it's, this is sort of like the opposite side, right? In the goal of making sure that you know what you're doing by forcing you to save every time, 
we're actually having the inverse effect where it's maybe causing some frustration and it's causing some errors because you're not used to these, you know, to this logic or this process, right? Yeah. So I understand um, why it's there. It's just, yeah, unfortunately, yeah, yeah. it's not helping. It's actually, uh, yeah, we don't have this service, but yeah. We'll, we'll see. We'll see what we can do. I'll, I'll talk about it to, to our you, I guess. All right, great. Um, well, let's talk about the in game economy. Uh, right now, the economy is kind of all over the place. You sure. know how it started with uh, people selling tier five or to the bots, and then you yeah. had to disable that, and people made, I don't know, <laughs> millions or billions or whatever. And then uh, you set the bots to buy or and buy all the basic items at a certain price. And now apparently people have figured out a way to buy all the raw ore and turn it into honeycomb or scrap and then sell it back to the bots to make extra profit because of the talent upgrades. Oh, well, that's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think that that's something that is going on right now. I'm, I didn't have a confirmation. I didn't go into the mats, but apparently yeah. because you know how much you get from talents... Sure. From refining to honeycomb, it's like you can even double or triple it. I, I um, can you buy T one ore from the from the bots? I don't think you can. No, today, no, no, right? no. Not you're not buying for the bots. You're buying for players. Okay. But then you sell it to bots. Okay. And then you buy from players oh, more. And you sell it to bots, okay. and that raises the price of, of hematite above malachite sometimes, which shouldn't be okay. right. Yeah, I mean, okay, so. I guess I'll answer this a little bit more generally. We definitely have some uh, economics growing pains. Um, you know, we, we we definitely have some very smart people uh, internally uh, that are looking at the economy. I'm not one of them, mm -hmm. <laughs> so mm -hmm. uh, I'll, I'll stay very general because I don't want to step on too many toes. All right. Um, but we know that we have some growing pains on the economy and that there's things that we need to address. Uh, but we're also learning as we go along. You know, we don't have any, uh, you know, big economy guys or, you know, Economics PhDs, and maybe we should. Mm -hmm. uh, that's 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 going to be a, an interesting point to raise. That maybe we should, you know, have somebody that's actually has a very very high degree of knowledge on economics and how all of this works. Mm -hmm. uh, we have some very smart people, but no one that is necessarily interacted with these systems. Um, and we're sort of learning as we're going. So you know, we we just you know as you said, we we've already made some changes that you know in retrospect seem very obvious now. Um, and you know that's that's probably what you guys are saying as well. That well, yeah, obviously you guys should have done that, <laughs> and that's probably true. Um, I think right now, from from what I understand, right now the economy is in an okay shape. Uh, it's not totally destroyed. Mm -hmm. uh, there's still a decent amount of activity on the market, and there's still things that are happening, players trading that sort of stuff. Uh, but obviously, you know the the thing that you mentioned with the with the scraps uh, selling that's something that we need to address. Uh, if that means that we need to adjust bot prices, if that means that we need to adjust uh, the talent bonuses, everything is open, and you know we're learning as we're going, and we need to adjust these things as we go, and uh, and and you know, I don't necessarily want to talk about a reset, but hopefully this is something that we can course correct over time, and you know mistakes of the past can sort of be fixed going forwards, yeah. uh, and if we can't, then that's going to be uh, that's going to be an interesting discussion. But do you guys think that uh, due to all the exploits, you know, how someone would get an output of, I don't know, 2,000 containers instead of two sometimes, sure. and that couldn't be really tracked because you guys cannot log that much info on every single yep. industry doing stuff. Um, do you think the game has integrity at this point when it comes to economy? I mean, I, I think, so there's a couple of things, right? Because every time an exploit happens, um, it, the, the the most important thing is the scale of the exploit, right? If one player gets 2,000 containers instead of two once, um, is that going to totally destabilize the you know the whole game? Probably not. It might create a small blip. Maybe temporarily containers will be cheaper, or you know that specific market or that specific area something could happen. Um, obviously, if 5,000 players get 2,000 containers instead of two ten times, and now probably containers for the end of time are going to be, you know, worthless, right? Yeah. Um, so I, I think we have to look at the scale and the effect of an exploit and see exactly how badly uh, it, it, it hurts the economy. Um, we're definitely not, you know, 100% perfect in terms of the, the integrity of the economy. You know, everything is not perfectly smooth. Everything is not, you know, we've had these exploits and that's that's undeniable. So we, we need to to be, you know, to, to know these things. Yeah. Um, but 
I guess it's about looking at the effect and looking at what happens and, and making sure that we take the right steps. Mm -hmm. uh, what about uh, the industry and its current performance issues? As in when you're setting up industry, it takes like five seconds on each link for me to set up uh, just, just one link between two industries. Uh, how are you going to address that? I think that's part of the performance concerns that we were talking about before, right? So we know that when links... I'm sorry about the background noise, by the way. No, it's no, not too bad. It's not right. too bad. Um, we know that industry, when you get to these very large mega industries, uh, you, you have potentially 200, 300 industries on the same construct. When you start linking things, things just sort of get totally out of whack and things get really laggy and the rendering gets really bad. Yeah. I think that is a subject that we need to address. Uh, whether that means making links, uh, the, the you know the visual of the links a little bit lighter or optimizing the performance on those things. But maybe it also means dealing with the fact that there are that many industries on a single contract, right? Maybe that needs something that needs to be something that's limited in other ways, right? So mm -hmm. um, we're definitely aware of this of this problem, and we need probably need to attack it from multiple angles, both from the performance side and from the fact that you have these mega contracts with 300, 400 industries. Maybe that's something that should be regulated a little bit more than it is today. Um, but yeah, it's definitely something that you want to address. And as, as a performance concern, it's, it's near the top of the list. So, mm -hmm. well, my current factory has, I think just transfer units, 1200 transfer units in it. And in order to set anything else up, you just, I mean, it just kills you, um, deep inside when you, when you want to make a new link, just because it just stops. Okay. It stops for five seconds. You're not doing anything. It just takes so much time to... I guess it's also good because it doesn't let people build too much. But then again, you know, it's it's very frustrating to work in that factory. If you want to just rearrange stuff, it takes super long at the moment. Yeah, I would no, say the, the, we, we, the whole Link Spaghetti is useless in a factory that is of that yeah, size. You're probably right. We, so yeah. to be clear, we don't want to have... We don't have we we don't want performance to be a limiting factor in the gameplay and in the balancing, right? That's okay. that's definitely not something that we want. Um, if we want to limit industries, we have to do it in a way that makes sense from the gameplay end. Uh, if you know, maybe maybe it's not normal that you have twelve hundred, uh, you know, transfers on your constructs. Maybe that's something that we want to address, either make easier or limited in some way, or maybe we have to, we have to address the root cause of why you have twelve hundred uh, transfer industry on yeah. your construct and make that easier and make that more coherent. Um, and then maybe that in itself will reduce the amount of links that you need to do. Um, that's sort of the sort of gameplay side uh, limits that we need. Mm -hmm. And then on the, on the tech side, we need to address the, the rendering and make sure that you know that's as optimized as it can be. Yeah. Um, just just a little bit more feedback on industry. I always have zero sound while I'm in my factory because it's so <laughs> loud. I just play with zero sound. I can't, I, I can't be bothered to change sound yeah. when I go in and out. So it's like I maybe yeah. that could I, I use think, a little bit of lowering overall. Yeah. I think in general for, for sound, we probably want to go to a direction where you we have like a bunch of sound options. Yeah. And so if you would just want to like toggle off industry sound, you can just toggle off industry yeah, sound. If I you guess can toggle off PvP yeah. sound, you can just toggle off PvP sound. Maybe having more sliders and just better control over your sound in general. That's definitely something that seems to be uh, to be important. All right. Uh, when it comes to new systems, what is your approach to new systems? Is there a way uh, that you guys have people come in with nothing into new systems, or do one of them integrate it into the current uh, system, that alias system? Yeah, that's. I mean, I, I think in regards to new systems, that's going to be one of the subjects that are so far away at this point that I, I I don't feel super comfortable giving any sort of like hard and fast answers on that. Mm -hmm. Um. I think when we have a new system, it's it's going to need to answer a concern, right? Right now, I think if you look at the game space, we still have a lot of space in the game, right? Um, sure, Alyot is decently filled, right? As the star of planet, there's a bunch of people in Alyot. Once you start going to these other planets, uh, there's still a lot of space available, a yeah. lot of territory to take, a lot of things that you can do on those plants. At this point, I don't think we necessarily need to add more space. So when we do the second, you know, the second um, system, it's going to be it's going to be as some sort of answer to a problem or as some sort of like logical uh, thing that we're doing. And I think that's going to going to define a lot of the uh, of the rules of the second system, if you will. And since I don't really know what that is right now, I, I, I couldn't give any great answers to that. Mm -hmm. But are you guys opposed to having some kind of new beginning, new civilization rising somewhere else? 
it's not something that we're fundamentally opposed on. I don't think there's a, you know, there's not something that we don't have any sort of moral mm -hmm. issues with it, I guess. Um, that's not to say that we're going to do it, but it, at the very least, it's not something that we, you know, we, we could consider it. Mm -hmm. But I'm just saying that because I would hate to see all the new guys miss out on the on the fresh experience of a fresh server where yeah. you have to start from nothing and you have to build the smaller ships to build the medium ships. Right now, they can just get a, a large core from an org because org has money to give out to new members and they just sure. skip half of the game. Uh, that That's my concern. Yeah. In general. Especially later on, like I three mean, maybe years in. In that regard, I think... Um... Yeah, I mean, that's interesting. I think maybe I'd have to think about that a little bit more. Um, I don't want to say anything too hastily, but mm -hmm. I think in the, in the overall macro look of the, of the game, um, we should probably try to get to a point where even if you can easily get an L core, that's not always the best answer, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? Especially as a starting player, right? So we should go in a direction or we should find ways where as a new player, there's maybe there's advantages or there's reasons or why you would want a small ship. Maybe even as a veteran player, there's a reason why you would occasionally want a small ship, and, and you could still have that small ship experience in certain situations. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I, I think it's a it's an interesting question. I think it requires probably a little bit more thought. Yeah. Um, what about mining um, with territory scanners, just scanning territories? I feel like right now, my DSI, Dark Star Appearance of Mattis, and we've scanned most of Mattis. There's no hematite left there. <laughs> Or close to no hematite left yeah. here. And we had to go somewhere else, find it. Sure. But that's already now. Um, are you thinking of maybe nerfing the scanners or how that works in general? Even like short term, because it's becoming a big problem, I would say, for a lot of our miners. Yeah, so I, I think um, I think the, the direction that we're going in, so this is sort of what you have on the, uh, on the starter screen. Um, we need to have more ways of seeding resources into the world. Um, and that goes for both planets and other things, right? So we have the mining unit uh, on the uh, on the agenda, and we have asteroids on the agenda, right? And so those, those are both things that we're going to be using in the future to sort of seed more resources into the game, right? Um, mining units are going to be sort of the planetary equivalent where uh, you're going to... Um, you're going to be able to put these things on your bases, and you're going to be able to uh, generate material off of your bases uh, in a more long-term fashion. Uh, mm -hmm. Seeing as you know, as you said, the the, the material in the ground is expiring. Yeah. Um, and then asteroids is going to maintain that mining gameplay. It's something that we're going to, going to be able to refresh and update, and so we're going to be able to keep having these asteroids pop into the world, and um, and uh, and be able to seed minerals that way as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it, those asteroids would most likely mostly be in uh, PvP zones. I would say that the most valuable asteroids would mm. be in the PvP zone. That's not to say that we can have you know PvE asteroids that everyone can just show up and mine in the in the non PvP zones as well. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, that but, would be uh, less valuable. Are you currently satisfied with the availability of tier one, tier two on each planet, or do you think it's a little bit too much? Maybe. That, that it's too easy to get? Um, you know, this was something that we, when we launched the beta, uh, the mineral availability is something that we rebalanced uh, based on the feedback from, you know, the earlier iterations of the game. Um, is it perfect now? I'm not sure. Um, you know, there's a lot of T1 in the ground um, and there's less T5 in the ground than there used to be. And, you know, it sort of meets in the middle there. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm not sure. I think it's a tough question to answer. And a lot of it depends as well on how motivated players are. I mean, sometimes if you find, you know, if you're willing to go out there and, and mine for hours, the amount of materials that you can get, it can be quite big um, if you're willing to put in the effort. So I, I guess it just depends. And we have a couple metrics on that, but I don't necessarily, necessarily have the, the numbers on hand, so I, I couldn't tell you mm -hmm. just here. All right. Um, let's go over maybe the main topic, or at least most important people have been bugging me about it for a long time, PvP, balancing PvP, sure. making PvP more interesting. Uh, how are you going to deal with the current cube meta where cubes are just the ultimate weapon in space? There's no yeah. reason not to build a cube. Sure. Um, so this is something that we've been actively working on. So I, I can give you a couple of, a uh, couple bits of info here. Mm -hmm. 
um, I guess there's three there's three ways that we're fundamentally addressing the sort of the the excess cube meta uh, you know subject. Yeah. Um, some of them are more soft restrictions, and a couple of them are a little bit of a some some harder nerf hammers. Um, I'll go from from the smallest to the biggest, I guess. All right. Um, the first thing that we're looking at, actually, do you mind if I step away for just one second? Someone's banging sure. on my door. I'll sure. be back in just one it. second. Okay. All right. Guys in chat, post your questions. Uh, I might take some from chat, but I have so many in front of me that uh, we don't have time. It's already been an hour since we started, just so you know. I like in the interview, so. Whoop. Sorry about that. <laughs> the hazards of working from home. Yeah. Um, sorry, where was I? So we're talking about the PvP cube meta. Yeah, yeah. Um, the first thing that we're doing to, to address that is we're going to be looking at the hit and miss formula. Mm -hmm. And as you know, one of the things that's part of the hit and miss formula today is the fact that we're looking at the core size, uh, to, def to define the, you know, general construct size. Mm -hmm. That's a little bit of a shortcut that we took, um, a little bit of a dev shortcut that we took because we didn't necessarily have the time to do it properly. Um, and now that's something that we're doing properly. So. One thing that we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at the actual cross section of the ship, um, of the way that it's actually built, rather than mm -hmm. at the, uh, the actual core size, and modifying the hit and miss formula to take that into account, uh, rather than the uh, than the than the core size. So, you know, you could imagine that even if you were on an XL core or an L core, sorry, uh, but you built sort of like a very thin tube ship, if you're going to attack it from the front, it would still have like a very small visual. It would mm -hmm. be the equivalent of a very small ship, uh, even though it was very long, right? But on, yeah. on, you know, on the flip side, if you saw it from the side, then you would have a much bigger cross section, cross section to shoot at, and you'd have much better chances. Yeah, makes hitting. sense. So, so I think this is one of the more secondary things. I think it's it's something that's good for PvP in general. Mm -hmm. um, but I think this is not the only answer, or the sole answer to the to the cube meta, because if anything, I mean, you could imagine that if we made this change alone. Um, it would encourage maybe even smaller ships, or it would encourage just maybe a different level uh, of ship size where you would have some ways of, you know, having the smallest angle with the most guns, right? <laughs> some, mm -hmm. some sort of version of that where you would still find a way of, you know, whatever core size you were using, you would still find a way of having the, the smallest core with the largest weapons, right? Yeah. Um, so that's the first thing. The second thing that we're going to do is we're going to be taking a look at radar lock ranges. Um, so as you know, today we have sort of these mismatches in the, in the, in the lock ranges where a large, you know, radar can't necessarily lock a small core very far and that sort of stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, we're just going to be making a blanket change here and we're going to be, uh, unifying all the lock ranges. So, uh, any particular size of radar is going to have a lock range and that is the range at which it can lock any target. So the, the, the size of the construct, uh, will not have an effect anymore, or the the core side of the contract rather, uh, will not have an effect anymore on how far it can be locked. So, I think one of the um, one of the things that you know really frustrated me uh, when I started sort of looking at you know what was going on in PvP was this idea that you could have a small construct with large weapons that could be out of locking range of a large radar on a on a large construct, mm -hmm. and that would be like totally uninteractive. Yeah. Um, and that's one of the things where it was like, oh, wow, that's that's really unfun. That's definitely not something that we want. Um, so we're going to be unifying the lock ranges and we're going to be having, uh, you know, large radar is going to be able to lock at a range and it's going to be able to lock everything within that range. And same thing for the for the small and the medium. And um, and we'll sort of see where that goes. And, you know, there's a possible that there's a reverse on the on the balance, right? Do maybe do only to this change where now large ships are going to be the most powerful and they'll be able to kill everything at range and stuff like that. Um, and that's something that we just need to be able to keep an eye on and adjust and, ba and keep balancing on and keep making mm -hmm. changes if we need to be making changes on that. And we're, we're I, I'm, I'm at the very, very attentive on, on what's going on there and I'm trying to be responsive. We're trying to be responsive on, uh, on how we fix these things. Mm -hmm. And the last thing that we're doing, um, I guess I'll, I'll split this last thing into two parts. There's going to be a, a longer ter term system that's going to be coming in, uh, that has the general goal of, uh, limiting what you can put on a ship. So I'll leave it at that. I'll leave it a little bit vague because because it's uh it's still a little bit vague for us as well. Mm -hmm. But generally speaking, when you're going to be putting uh, elements on a on a construct, you might have to start making choices. You might have to start thinking about whether you want this or that, 
I'll, I'll leave it at that. Mm -hmm. um, but the second part, and this, this, uh, this is going to be coming in uh, more quickly, um, we're going to be limiting weapon sizes per cores. Um, so exactly the exact balancing on that is T TBD, exactly what's going to be available for what size. Uh, but I guess at this point, it's safe to say that you won't be able to put large weapons on excess cores anymore. Yeah, it's that's just very something important. That yeah. Limit. Yeah. Um, and so maybe there'll be some sort of crossover or maybe it'll be size based, et cetera. But essentially, if you want to have large weapons, uh, you're probably going to need at least, I would guess, a medium core uh, and maybe even just a large, large core. Mm -hmm. So um, I think the those three things are sort of we're going to push that out all at the same time. I'm not actually sure when, but it, uh, it should be pretty quick at this point, hopefully not too long. Um, and then we'll see sort of like where the meta develops from there. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, what about the safe zone size around the planets? Do you think it's a little bit too big right now? Um, can you define? So when you say too big, is there is there something that you mean about that? Or well, what do you, what if do you mean I too big, if I'm if I'm flying a hauler with like two point five Gs, and I go behind the planet to the edge of the safe zone, and then I turn around and I go towards Alioth, let's say, and I use the 5 SU distance to speed up. I can get to max speed with almost anything in that like double radius of the safe zone. And I can avoid PvP completely every time. Sure. Uh, is um, that a problem that, that you can just avoid PvP completely? I think that's not a problem per se. I think what you're describing is maybe a smart maneuver that takes time. I think if you're willing to go through hassle of sort of like setting up your propulsion, going to the far side of the planet, and then slingshot, slingshotting yourself around while generally going in the right direction, that sort of stuff, I think that's that's a decent maneuver that takes a decent amount of time. And I don't think it makes you immune to PvP. It probably makes you immune to the more basic versions of pvp which is just camping on the exterior and waiting for someone to come out at you know three kilometers or you know three thousand uh, meters per second uh, but i think if someone really wants to chase you down and has the right uh you know the right engines and the right uh, propulsion for it maybe they still can maybe. so maybe at this yeah. point you're matching your effort versus their effort and and if they're willing to put in the effort rather than just sitting on the edge of the bubble and, and waiting for someone to just walk out mm. and you're putting in a lot of effort to dodge them maybe it's okay that you can get away from that situation right mm. um at the end of the day, it's a question of how much effort each side is sort of pulling, yeah. putting into the equation. Because the PP guys um, could scout, and then, oh, yeah. he's coming in, and then the other guy halfway there starts speeding up, and then he catches Exactly, up. right? If, 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 if they knew who you were, and they knew that you were going to be transporting a lot of materials, and they were scouting your base, and they saw you take off, and they followed you from the planet, and then they started aligning in the direction that you were going before you were even speeding up, and then as soon as you come out, they're matching transversal, and they're right on top of you. Mm -hmm. Now they're matching your effort, right? Now they're, they're putting in time to be able to kill you when you're also putting enough putting in enough time to try to you know save yourself right mm. um you know it's it's an interesting interesting question I'm, I'm not sure exactly if the if the save zone sizes are too big or too small one of the things that we wanted to ensure uh was that you couldn't cover the entire planet with your radar and that sort of defined uh one of the metrics for the sizes of the save zones mm. so if you were like right at the edge of the save zone with your with your you know large space radar you wouldn't be able to see the far side I of the planet now. right yeah yeah, yeah. We, didn't want, we didn't want a ship to just be able to sit somewhere and see everything coming out of the zone and potentially just be able to shoot everything coming out of the zone we wanted to be able to say okay well there's a roadblock here and there's like a, a camp here well okay i'll just go out the other side and i'll be fine and if they really want to interdict the entire planet maybe they need like 10 ships in, in a sphere to be able to see everything mm -hmm. and then then now we're back to the to the question of putting in a lot of effort if they really want to be able to see, they see everything that comes out of the planet it's not just like one ship sitting there it's uh you know a, a sphere of 10 ships covering every exit right and now now okay maybe it's okay then that they get to see everything that comes out of that zone right yeah. so there's a discussion. There's a discussion to be had there for sure. Yeah, but there's there's a secret weapon any hauler uh, can pull off, and that is the logout break. So, oh, I got scouted. I'm gonna go a little bit forward, logout break, go somewhere sure. else. I don't. I I don't think there's a way for the PPRs to stop someone from leaving the planet currently because I've I've tried every method from both sides, and uh, I I don't think anyone could stop me with I mean, a full hauler right now. I just don't think there's a way. So I, I think that you know, if that's true, and and I'm not saying that you're that you're wrong. If, if that's true, that's that's maybe something that we want to look at on the balance side, mm -hmm. right? Um, if it's too hard, or or you know, it's too easy for these haulers to be able to get away, uh, and no matter no matter what effort you put it on the other side, 
uh, you'll, there's no way you'll ever catch a smart hauler. Well, then maybe that's something that we want to adjust. Maybe we want to mm-hmm. start tilting the odds a little bit back in the other side and saying, okay, well, you know, you have all these ways to make sure that you keep your hauler safe. Let's let's remove one of them. Let's reduce the strength of one of these things, yeah. and let's see what happens. Then that's not definitely something that we're open to, uh, but we just have to be careful because um, griefing is 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 potentially quite dangerous. Yeah, I think the the it is better to err on the safe side and have PVPers have other outputs. So ideally, you know, as we were talking about earlier, PVPers are off doing other things rather than just camping a planet waiting for haulers to leave. Yeah. It's not to say that they can't do those things or that those things will never be viable or important. Uh, but I, I would prefer that not to be the main point of PVP. Mm-hmm. Um, if we get to the space where, if we get to an area where it's too easy uh, to kill haulers coming out of planets and that's all PVPers are doing and they're just, you know, shooting these harmless haulers coming out of the zone um i think that's also quite dangerous so it's a it's a it's a thin balance to maintain but uh we're, we're open to changing things if it if it is the case that it's way too easy to be a hauler yeah um but i guess hopefully pvpers have better things to do in the end well the problem right now is the only way to gain resources is to mine and transport them to your base sure. there's nothing else in the game so obviously you can't blame all the pv guys trying to get the the ore from the hall yeah absolutely so right now there's really not much else to do uh if you want yeah, to so fight maybe someone we need in a PvP, it's a loss on both sides um maybe so. we need a way to have reward in pvp so that if if, yeah. if there is some sort of pvp somewhere uh if you do win the fight versus other you know willing yeah. pvpers uh, we can tell you well, here here's a bunch of materials here's a bunch of stuff here's some some stuff that you can play around with right yeah yeah uh, what about hailing other ships? Let's say you see someone on the radar. Uh, is that an option that you're willing to introduce in the game? Yeah, we, we've talked about being able to sort of like open conversations from the radar list mm-hmm. and that sort of stuff. Um, I think that's important, especially for the social aspect of the game. You know, if you're if you're ransoming someone or even if you just need help, if you're getting attacked and you're just hailing someone like, oh, help me, I'll pay you, whatever, this and that. Yeah. I definitely think it's it's a nice little functionality to be able to open a conversation with a ship that you see on the radar. Um, we've had sort of these discussions like, oh, do you open it with the, do you open it with the pilot? Do you open it with the owner? Blah, blah, blah. Mm. These are small details that we can sort of hash out. Um, to be honest, that's probably a, a pretty small thing that we could do pretty quickly. Um, I definitely think that that sort of thing is, is, is important, especially in the social aspect and being able to, you know, even just to talk trash sometimes. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you're beating up on a dude and you just want to start talking trash, I think that's important sometimes in a in multiplayer games and an MMO to be able to have that social interaction. Uh, we've had a lot of people leave, uh, like take a break from DU lately that were in PvP. After we took that fight with uh, Boo, the mass fight uh, that happened, sure. like 30, 40 ships, uh, the server kind of died during that fight. And yeah. that's something that you guys can fix going into the future with these mass battles. I mean, I think um, we actually got a lot of data from that from that fight um, because that level of of combat is not something that we had experienced before. I mean, we tried to replicate it internally, but we just don't have enough people mm-hmm. uh, to be able to do that with you know, 100, <laughs> 200 people and yeah. 40, 50 ships. Um, so we got a lot of data off of that, and hopefully it's something that going forward we can just keep improving. Again, it's you know it's it's all these server and performance related issues. They're they're at the top of the list, yeah. and every time, and this one's an important one, right? Because having these big battles is is sort of part of the DNA of the game at this point, right? Um, it's something that we that we want to happen. It's something that you know is cool when it happens, uh, and so we need to make sure on our end that it's that it's functional. And I I trust that it's something that we can do, uh, that we we. We have the ability to make these battles stable, mm-hmm. um, and yet it's, it's something that we definitely want to make work. All right, uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, markets. Player markets are going to be coming in. Do you have any ETA on uh, when that's going to happen? No, there's there's no real ETA on player markets at this point. It's uh, it's definitely a big thing. It's a big subject. It's a big important part that we that we want to do eventually. Uh, but at this point, we sort of have to put it, you know, in front of all the other things that we want to do. And we have to think about, okay, well, what is it actually adding to the game compared to these other things that we want to do? And it always seems to fall a little bit short, um, on some of those, uh, compared to some of those other subjects. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's definitely still something that we want to do eventually. And I think, you know, as we keep going forward, as we start addressing some of these more important issues, it's something that will slowly sort of go up the, Mm -hmm. uh, the priority list. 
but I would say that there's no real ETA on, on right. when it's coming in. Um, but uh, let's say it hits in, in six months and players are given their opportunity to make their own markets. Do you think that market fragmentation is going to become an issue? Because it already is sort of on Alioth with so many markets just like kilometers away. It becomes a little bit of a hassle going around I think, them. I think one of the things, I, I think this could be an issue, but it, it's also in the powers of players to solve it, right? So in a world where we have a player markets, um, I mean, if players want to focus on using one market and that becomes the main market for that planet, for that area, well, that's something that they have the power to do, right? If there's two mm -hmm. competing markets in an area and they're both, you know, lobbying people to come use their market and they're maybe even fighting uh, battles over control of, for their markets, um, those are things that are cool and those, those are things that we would like to happen. Um, so it, it is fundamentally a player choice in a world where we have player markets. Um, if, if the most optimized logical things becomes that everybody uses one market, well, there's going to be a winner. Uh, you know, whoever's org owns that market is going to is going to love life. Mm -hmm. uh, and if there are competitors, they're trying to sort of like have better taxes or have better prices or, you know, be uh, just be better and try to compete in that space while well, they can try that, too. And if there is fragmentation, that's you know, that's that's the game world. And that's the players are sort of doing what uh, the players do, I guess. Yeah. All right. Uh, I don't want to uh, drag it out uh, too much longer. So I'm just going to ask some quick questions. Um, Go for it. Warp drive. Do you think it's a problem right now that it's too cheap to just warp size uh, in general? It's possible that warp drive is too cheap. Yeah, um, I know that we've looked at that. It's very possible that warp drive costs will be going up uh, in the future. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, market quality of life improvements. Are there any coming in, like UI redesign at least? Yeah, I think there are some market quality. It's not. It wouldn't be a full redesign, but there are some filtering options uh, coming in and some mm -hmm. sorting options coming in. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure if it's the next patch or the one after that, but we we have some stuff in the works. Anything for uh, hubs taking uh, more than ten containers at once because that's the limit currently, ten per hub. Um, so I think there's there's two solutions to this problem. The first is either to just make larger containers. Uh, so it would mm -hmm. be the simplest solution for us to just make uh, XXL containers, yeah, and yeah. now you would have, you know, an infinite amount of space potentially. If if you know if if one XXL container is two or three or four times an XL container, we've just timed forward uh, what you can put in a full mm -hmm. hub. I think it should be possible to add to the number of links to the link slots that you have on a hub. That's just something that we need to look into. Yeah, because currently the problem is if you want to deploy a blueprint of something that is. Bigger yeah. than ten large containers, then you just can't do it. Absolutely, yeah, not yeah. possible. Yeah, I think I think the simplest quick fix solution to that is definitely adding a a container size over yeah. uh, Excel, and and that would probably solve yeah. a lot of the issues. Uh, exploit or critical bug reward systems? Is there anything planned for something like that where people report exploits and get some kind of reward? Not as far as I'm aware. No. Okay. I don't think there's anything planned for that. Okay. Uh, what about the map improvements? Uh, currently, the map is two D and non-interactive at all like you can only click sure. on planets it's a, is there anything coming in um the 3d map is sort of a a topic that comes back very often mm -hmm. it's something that keeps popping back up on our radar uh no pun intended um <laughs> it's 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 again it's one of those topics that just keeps falling just slightly short um, I think it's important. I think eventually we will definitely do it to have like a, a full interactive 3D map because eventually it's going to be quite important. And we're already starting to run into moments where it's like, oh, well, if we had the 3D map, this would be 10 times easier uh, yeah. to, to do this feature or to do this, thing, right? So it's something that's also creeping up the the ladder of priority and the ladder of importance. Uh, no guarantees on what it'll come come in, but it's, it's definitely a subject that's on the table. Yeah, right now we're all using the dual SH uh, 3D map. And that's where we calculate yeah. the distances and stuff because we can't do it in game. So they did a pretty good yeah. job already, yeah. like two months ago. Of the um, reverse dispensers, where you put in, uh, well, you, you know what I'm talking about. You, yeah, you, you I think get quanta for putting in stuff. Sure. Yeah. So the the dispenser asks for 20 liters of yes. something and yes. gives out 20 quanta. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, I think that's an interesting idea. I think it's potentially something that we could do quickly if that's something that uh. That you know a lot of people want. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not. It's not. I'm gonna be honest. It's not necessarily something that we have thought of before. Mm -hmm. uh, for all the things that we have thought of, this isn't necessarily one of them. So definitely an interesting idea that we could look into. I guess that would replace the need for player markets to a degree for now, where people can sure. set up their own shops that buy stuff. 
from from yeah, players. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, any in-game music additions? Uh, work on a new in-game music and the whole system. Not as far as I'm aware, no. Mm-hmm. Uh, mirror mode for voxel and element placement. Um, so can you clear when you say mirror mode? Can you just clarify what that is so that I'm let's say sure you I'm build right half of the ship and then you just copy the sure. other half over uh, and not, don't have to build both sides. Right. So, in theory, you should be able to handle that with some level of copy paste, but I guess it's less powerful than the full mirror. Yeah, um, my my mind, my understanding of Voxel says that that should be something that's easy to do. Maybe it's something that we can add as a as an alt version of some some existing voxel tool, so I, that's something that I could talk to the voxel guys about and see what they say. Yeah, I guess it would work where you put some kind of plane and you start building on one side and it automatically sure. copies on the other side whatever you do. Okay. Yeah, that would be interesting. Yeah, it might be a little bit more complex to do than than what I was thinking about, but mm. uh, worth looking into. Mm-hmm. Uh, joystick support for flying. Um, I think we have some rudimentary implementation today of joystick support, but I think it's pretty rough. I, I wouldn't be surprised if it was quite hard to get working. I think there's a lot of uh, of tweaking you have to do on the joystick side to get it working, but I think we have like a very rough implementation of it. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd be lying if I said improving that was high on the pre list. I don't think that it is, mm-hmm. uh, but if it's something that becomes very important for the community and, and you know we've got a lot of joystick users, then uh, potentially that's something that we could look into. All right, uh, last question, XL cores. Are they coming into the game anytime soon? Not anytime soon, no. I'm afraid not. <laughs> uh, probably probably for the best, I would say. <laughs> yeah, to all maybe. The, yeah, that would just be too much, I guess. Because people can build them, yeah. I would say. Like, they could build a huge ship, XL ship, with the materials yeah. that they have currently. So, yeah, maybe the best. That, yeah. I guess we covered all the topic. Is there anything else that maybe you would like to talk about that i didn't ask about i mean uh not particularly i think my brain is a little fried right now after uh, answering all those questions <laughs> in overdrive well thank you so much uh, for, uh, we... for coming in and answering all these questions i think yeah. a lot of people got and hopefully hopefully you guys are... yeah a lot of people got what they yeah, I was just wanted thinking, hopefully to hear got some good answers and i wasn't too uh too vague with the answers and i gave you guys some good info no, no, they, everyone's, you, uh, you did a really good job with answering uh pretty complicated questions too so uh yeah thank you for joining me uh i guess i'll see you again some other time time, yeah and uh, yeah no worries we can do this again maybe in a few months and see uh see where we are sure take care then thanks a lot